Is the film industry in decline? Many people would say that it is, and there's plenty of reasons that would back up those claims. I mean, look at the number of remakes that we're getting, or how many franchises seem to be dying off. To many, it feels like the industry is lacking creativity, and audiences aren't showing up to films that look like something they've already seen before. 2023 has definitely had some fantastic films released, and there have been some huge successes, but on the flip side, it's also been one of the worst years for Hollywood in a long time. Some of the biggest studios around have had a shocking number of flops this year, costing them hundreds of millions of dollars. Is this a sign of an industry in decline, and is there any way to save it? Let's find out. I think it's important to take a look back on the history of the film industry, and specifically when talking about the decline of the industry, the 1960s shares many similarities to some of the current issues we see today. Hollywood's golden era, which started somewhere around the 1920s, though some would argue it began a little earlier, was the time when Hollywood really became famous and known as the place to make movies. During this time, there were five major studios, MGM, RKO, 20th Century Fox, Warner Brothers, and Paramount Pictures, that dominated the entire industry. During the 1920s and the 1930s, historically more films were made than any other decade, and that includes the current decade. This boom of the industry would eventually come to an end by the 1960s. There was a few important factors that led to this era ending. First off, on May 24th, 1948, the United States Supreme Court ruled in the case of the United States vs. Paramount that the five major studios had violated antitrust laws and held a near monopoly on the film industry. The studios had exclusive contracts with actors and directors, owned the theaters where their films played, worked together to control how their films played in independent theaters, and some even owned the companies that processed their films. This made it very difficult for independent filmmakers and smaller studios to have any real success in the industry. After this ruling by the Supreme Court, the studios began selling off the theaters they owned, and they released actors and directors from their contracts. At the same time this was all happening, another big factor to the end of the golden era was beginning, television. In 1948, when the Supreme Court ruling occurred, there were around 90 million moviegoers, and by 1958, there were about 46 million. So the television definitely hit the industry hard, and many of those big studios from the golden era sold off their film libraries to television stations. After such a major blow to the big studios of Hollywood, they began trying anything they could to bring audiences back to the theaters and compete with television. They tried things like CinemaScope, which made films widescreen, put stereo sound in theaters, and even made 3D movies, but nothing really made an impact. Even though they were attempting to use new technology, the films the studios were making sort of stuck to a few genres, including a lot of musicals, historical epics, and war stories, because these types of films really benefited from being seen in theaters on a big screen with better sound, something television couldn't really offer. Still, the industry in Hollywood continued to decline, and many expensive films flopped. One quick example is the film Dr. Doolittle, which cost Fox around $17 million to make, or roughly $151 million today, and only brought in $9 million at the box office in 1967. Right around this time, European and Japanese art house and commercial cinema started making waves in the US as younger audiences became more attracted to the artistic and open approach that was seen in their filmmaking. The same year Dr. Doolittle flopped, Several small studios had success with films that were more inclusive and took on more taboo subjects that Hollywood was afraid of, such as The Graduate, Bonnie and Clyde, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, and In the Heat of the Night. All four of these films were nominated for Best Picture at the 1968 Academy Awards, and In the Heat of the Night even won Best Picture. The winner is In the Heat of the Night, Walter Murray. This shook up Hollywood even more and forced them to truly start taking risks by giving younger filmmakers more opportunities to create movies of their own and with the freedom to tell stories they wanted and more importantly how they wanted, leading to more unique and creative films as a result. Hollywood began thriving again in the 1970s by telling stories that television could not. In theaters, you were allowed to show violence, be more frightening, more risky, and tell stories in much greater detail. The 1970s included films like The Godfather, The Exorcist, Taxi Driver, and Jaws, just to name a few. Of course, these classics wouldn't have been made without many of the young actors, directors, and other crew members that made these films possible. The 1970s really was a comeback era and brought a lot of innovation and new ideas to the industry while also kicking off the careers of many important filmmakers.
As you can see, the film industry has always had ups and downs, and if we look at 2023, we can see similarities to the issues of the past. Just like Hollywood made the mistake of playing it too safe and getting too comfy making a bunch of musical, war films, and historical epics back in the 1950s and 1960s, the Hollywood of today has done the exact same thing, but with different types of films. They continue pumping out superhero movies, franchise films, and remakes, and refuse to really take any risks. Just look at the movies that have flopped this year. Huge franchises like Indiana Jones losing Disney around $100 million or Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning that also lost around $100 million for Paramount. And it's not just the franchises losing money. Remakes have performed terribly this year too. The Haunted Mansion had a budget of $150 million but only brought in $118 worldwide and possibly the biggest failures this year have been the superhero movies. The Flash only made $270 million against a $300 million budget and the Marvels came in to take the crown by only making $197 million with a budget of $273.8 million, making it the lowest grossing film ever in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If these types of failures aren't a wake-up call for Hollywood, then I don't know what can be. The reality is audiences are getting burnt out by the same stories being told over and over again and the big flashy blockbuster movies just don't hold the same value that they once did. They cost the studios a huge amount of money to make, so in order to succeed, they have to do extremely well. Even though there is so much content to consume right now, it seems like audiences are still craving originality and uniqueness. Even if Hollywood's failures are warranted, it's definitely sad to see the industry hurting, but as we've learned from the past, this could be a fantastic opportunity to shift in a new direction. As I mentioned earlier, in the 1970s, the film industry saw an increase in young filmmakers taking center stage and creating more taboo and unique stories that Hollywood was originally scared of. It seems like we could be on the brink of this occurring once again. 2023 has had many indie slash lower budget films do really well. Take Talk To Me, for example. It's a low budget horror film made for only $4.5 million and is directed by Danny and Michael Philippou, two directors who were originally YouTubers. The film circulated around around film festivals in 2022 and 2023 until A24 eventually acquired the project to distribute it in the United States. The film was a huge success receiving great reviews and hit a box office total of $90.5 million worldwide. Its first week out was also the most successful film for A24 since Hereditary in 2019. This is just one example of many this year, and if you look back over the past few years, there's been a lot of breakthrough films from independent and smaller studios. Like Talk To Me, many Many of those breakthrough films have come from A24, which has really taken the industry by storm. Originally founded in 2012, A24 has been responsible for films like Spring Breakers, Ex Machina, Room, Moonlight, The Disaster Artist, Hereditary, Midsommar, Uncut Gems, and Everything Everywhere All at Once, just to name a few. It's apparent that they're able to tap into what audiences are wanting when they go to the movies. And if you've ever seen any of A24's films, you'll know the majority of them are stories that big studios would turn down and never make or even distribute. Though I do think there's an argument to be made that streaming services and the internet to some degree have hurt the film industry, I also think it's done a lot of good for young and independent filmmakers. Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, and other streaming services have in a similar way to A24 picked up and created films that the big studios would have never even looked at. Unlike the big studios, streaming platforms are way more willing to take risks, giving young filmmakers a fantastic opportunity. We're in a time now where independent artists could even take the route of making a film all on their own without any help from a studio. There's plenty of resources to crowdfund projects and release them on your own. And filmmakers are also able to showcase their talents by making short films and putting them on YouTube to help get their work out there. There's an endless amount of content that can be created, and if taken advantage of, this is a great way to expand your abilities. With platforms like YouTube, you can take as many risks and be as creative as you want, and it doesn't really matter if it fails or succeeds. If you're creating, you're gonna learn along the journey, and the next time you make something, it's only going to be better. Just like in the 1970s, there's a a lot of opportunity for the next wave of filmmakers to rise up, and that's why I think despite all of the failures and flops of big movies this year, there is absolutely still hope for the industry. It might look different and projects might not all go to theaters, but that's completely fine. If a masterpiece comes out from some unknown independent filmmakers and it only succeeds on streaming services, that's still a win for the film industry. It's not all about numbers, even if Hollywood wants it to be. 
2023 has been a roller coaster for the film industry, but it's also a very exciting time for young and independent filmmakers. There's a lot of opportunity to create and tell unique stories that audiences are desperately searching for. If Hollywood and the big studios want to shift the direction they're heading, then just like in the 1970s, they'll need to start taking risks again and giving opportunities to a different generation of filmmakers. If they choose to continue only making blockbuster movies that cost hundreds of millions of dollars or remakes that we didn't ask for, then they will most certainly continue to see failures and flops. I think bringing back mid and lower budget films with original ideas could definitely be a good thing for the industry. If Hollywood and the big studios fail to make changes like they've done in the past, then I think we will only see smaller studios begin to rise up even more and streaming services will continue to grow their libraries and be responsible for creating the next generation of great filmmakers. Now more than ever, filmmakers have the ability to create great movies without needing the big studios help. If anyone is going to save the industry, it's the artists and not the guys in suits. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like and feel free to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.